when you're dealing with a buyer and they're giving you too many compliments for your sales skills and abilities, what could this mean and why does it matter? I'm Scott Sublimbell. I'm coming to you live from Sacramento, California on a perfect day to talk about sales and a perfect day to talk about your sales process. Now, you do enough sales calls, you're gonna see common trends, you're gonna see things that, it, that have issues and things that have problems. And one of them is when you start getting towards the end of your sales presentation where somebody starts complimenting you a lot. It's just you should be ready for the big letdown. It doesn't always go down this way, but most of the time what it is is that person is trying to get you off your guard to change the conversation so that you're not going to ask them for the business. Okay? So there's been plenty of times where I sit down with somebody, I give them a presentation, I'm about to roll numbers, and they're like, look, you're a really good sales guy. Look, I really like your presentation. Look, you got a good style. But you, what you should be waiting for is the but. You should be waiting for why is this person saying this right about now. And what it normally is, is they're starting to edge into objections. What they're starting to do is like, I've given you a compliment, now I gotta give you the letdown. I've given you a compliment and the letdown is coming. And so I'll ask people, so why did you say that just now? Why is it that you feel that way? And I get them to open up. Now I remember, I don't know, probably 10 years ago, I was giving a sales presentation in a pretty exclusive gated neighborhood, but they're in the foothills of Sacramento. And so they have deer, they have turkey, they have geese, they have all sorts of animals in these houses. They're on lots that don't have fences. So in California, that's not something that's super common anymore, but this is just how it is there. So I'm sitting there and this guy's got this beautiful picture window and we're talking and he looks out the window and I'm about to roll numbers. I am about like we are 95% way through the presentation and he knows it. Right? He, he knows that it's coming and in his stomach he's like, closing process is coming, closing process is coming, I gotta change the subject. So I roll numbers, right? Tell him, project's gonna be 15 G's, 15 grand, right? And he looks out the window, he's like, hey look, dear, it was my job to keep him on topic. It was my job to keep the focus going in the sales process. Said, yep, absolutely, there's a ton of deer out here in this neighborhood, you're gonna have this pretty common, we gotta get this project taken care of. And so we get back to it and he's like, hey look, there's a buck. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to take the conversation that I have going this way, and he's trying to, I'm zigging, he's zagging. <laughs> I'm going this way, he's going that way. I'm going for the clothes, he's going for, let's get out of the clothes. Okay? So I get him back on board. Hey, like project, 15 G's. We got to get it taken care of. We got to get, you know, we got to get you covered. And then he's like, oh yeah, look, ducks. And I'm like, I already know where this is going. He's trying to change the flow of the process. He's trying to change the flow of everything that's going on. It's kind of like if you've ever sat down with a buyer and you're presenting and you have a presentation guide, you have documents you've written on, and before you can get to the close, they go, hey, do I get to keep this? Hey, is this mine? And what they're trying to do is they're trying to circumvent you to get to the closing process or they're trying to take you off the game. It's one of two things, right? Very rarely does somebody like, hey, I like your style. I think you're a really good sales guy. Uh, yeah, can I just keep this information? Do I get to get going? It's usually some way to cushion what's coming next. And what's coming next typically isn't good. So like you gotta have frame control. You gotta have the ability to focus on what's going on and look at the sales call for what it is and say, look, if I'm going into closing mode, I'm going into closing mode. But before I do that, I need to know why this person has a problem. I need to know what's going on because once you hit closing mode and they're out of it in their mind, it's really tough to reel them back in unless you have some skills like you know how to anchor, you know how to, to use some psychological triggers against the person. You gotta know what's coming next is probably not good and it's gonna cost you some problems unless you could keep some control on the conversation and say, here's where we're going, here's what we're doing. Now I'll tell you, now that you've made it this far, I'll tell you what probably happened was you didn't set some sort of agenda as to what to have or set some sort of expectation of what you were gonna do in your sales presentation. You went in there and you built some rapport and you're just like, yeah, I got rapport, I got this, this person's really cool with me. And then in the sales process, you probably hit just a little bit too much. Now, I have this belief that there's good rapport and then there's bad rapport. Good rapport is we're similar, we're alike, we have things going on, you like me, I like you, there's some likability. Bad rapport is when you build up too much and that person uses it against you in your process and then you have problems and you have issues. So, two things going on. If you went into your call and you didn't build your uh, expectations on early on the call and then you built too much rapport, chances are pretty good that person's gonna get to the end and be like, man, you're a really good salesperson. I know closing's coming, I gotta change the subject, I gotta get out of here, I just gotta say, hey, like, give me your information. Now, a lot of times when you get to the end of a presentation and the buyer's like, do I get to keep this? It's meant to neuter you so that you can't go through your closing sequence. So like when I was doing in-home sales, I would have people say, hey, look, 
hey, Scott, here's what I want you to do. I would just be just about to the end, just about ready to roll price, and they'd go, hey, now that you've done everything, can you just email me the information? And early on in my career, I didn't realize, wait a minute, they're getting me to not go into my closing sequence by asking for an email. I had to learn how to say, look, we're almost there. We just got a few more minutes. Let's sit down. Let's figure it out. Or I had to reset that appointment and figure out where I can meet with them and have a conversation face-to-face. -face. There's a couple of moves that you have. You just got to know what's going on when someone's like, hey, you're really good at what you're doing. Can I get a business card? It's usually the grounds for a no. It's usually the grounds for an objection. It's usually the grounds for some sort of stall, and you need to see what's going on, okay? So it's happened to me a bunch. I've been through a ton of calls. I've sat through a bunch of calls where salespeople don't realize what's going on, and it creates some problems. So you got one thing to do from here, just one thing. Find the subscribe button and click on it every time I send out a video. You'll get an update that says Scott Bell Consultant sent out another fantastic video. You should check it out, which you should. We'll see you soon. Thanks for dropping by. Aloha.